Welcome back folks. In this video I'm going to show you how to make the simplest of cushions for a camper van, caravan, um, garden seat, boat. So it only comprises of two pieces. So you've got the top which is the, the fabric I've got now on the bench and the base which is cut from a, a different cloth. It's a breathable base cloth. So I'm going to do the top first. I've put the actual size of the cushion onto a pattern so it's easier for you to see. So the first thing is to draw a line on the bottom of the fabric. So you can see I've got a line here now. The foam is going to be four inches thick. I'm going to sew a seam allowance at three eighths of an inch. So the border will end up being um, three and five eighths deep, which will make the cushion a little bit plumper and rounder. It's also going to be wadded. You don't have to wad it, but I like to wad cushions. Um, if you haven't got a back coated fabric, wadding is pretty essential because the foam over time will wear away at the fabric. Whereas wadding is a, a, a protective layer as well as um, gives you a bit more comfort on the foam. So for this I'm going to need a ruler, pen, pencil, whatever you decide to write on the cloth with. Always write on the reverse side of the cloth, never the good side. If you write on the good side and you make a mistake then you need to deal with getting that off. And if you're writing in biro or anything that isn't a fabric pencil then that will be hard to get off, if not impossible. So I'll first start by measuring four inches. So I'll measure four inches. Four inches. So I'm just going to dash this line in. I'm going to place the pattern on that line. I need to make sure that I've got enough here to give me four inches. That's plenty. It's more than I need. So I'm just pinning the um, the pattern to the fabric. Four corners done. Now I need to mark four inches on all the other three sides and then draw a line. Same on this side. Four inches. So with the square what I need to do, I need to add a seam allowance. So I'll continue this line along so you can see better. Continue that and I'll continue this along as well. So we need to add a seam allowance to this line here and this line here. That's my seam allowance there. I'll do the same on the other four corners. So that's the actual cover drawn out onto the fabric. I need to put a forward mark. Most fabric has a direction. Um, some has a direction because of the nap of the cloth or the pattern. Um, or a grain if it's on vinyl. So you need to make sure that everything is running exactly the same way. Then I need to cut this out. So that's the cover cut out. So when I machine this together, what I need to do is just to machine these corners. So I'll machine that seam there, which will create the sides of the cushion and the top. So as you can see, there's a definite nap to this fabric. So if I don't make the cushions the right way, then one will be going one direction and the nap when you brush it will go one way and the other will go the other way and it will be very noticeable. So you need to make sure, even if you think it's not got a nap, it may have a slight colour change depending on which way the fabric runs. So make sure that when you cut any fabric out, all the cushions are orientated in the right direction so they are running the same way when they're in situ. So I'm now going to cut the base cloth out. This is a breathable base cloth. It comes in various colours, but I'm using black. So I'm going to pin the pattern to the base cloth. And I need to add a seam allowance all around. I 
I'm going to sew a horseshoe zip into this. I'm also going to put a bit of the cloth on the bottom of it as well. I'll cut it out. So this is where the zip's going to get sewn into. I'm using double-sided seaming tape. So I'm just using the tape so it holds down the piece of fabric so that when I sew it, it's not going to move. So I'm also going to add a strip of Velcro as well to this to keep the cushion in place when it's in situ. So this is self-adhesive Velcro, you don't have to use self-adhesive, you don't even have to use the seaming tape, you can just sew the strip of cloth on to the, um, to the base, but I just like to, to have everything in place, so I just do one seam that goes through both the Velcro and the strip of cloth. So I'm now going to sew the Velcro on, which will attach the strip of fabric as well. Now the velcro is attached I'll flip it over and need to attach or to sew the zip on now I'll get rid of the excess just fold it up so it's not not in the way zip facing down I'll start with the needle in I'm going to sew it straight up to where the curve starts leave the needle in and I'm going to hold the zip in my right hand and keep it quite taut and oh, in the left hand I'm going to hold the rest of the fabric. I'm going to move the fabric and keep the zip still. So gently just move the fabric. leave the foot in or the needle in and then continue leave the needle in I'm going to do the same with this next curve Zip straight and move the cloth with my left hand. Leave the needle in. Open the zip up again. Slide it on halfway. Other side in. Got in. Get rid of the slider to the middle. So I'm going to keep everything as flat as possible. And just create little pleats. Needle in, foot up, push the slider back. Put 
snip, scissors in, and just cut between the lines. So well, that's the best done. So I now need to sew the cover, the top part of the cover. Sew these together, so right sides together. Bring these two seams in. Now here, I'm not gonna start right on the edge of the fabric. I'm going to bring it in a seam allowance. I'll do the same with all four corners. So that's now got its corners sewn up all four sides and I'm going to sew the top onto the base so I'm going to start in one corner line it up corner to corner so both corners are in line and put the needle in so it's just on the end of the the seam line that I've put in here I'm just going to do a back tack Leave the needle in. I'm going to grab both ends. So I've got the opposite corner lined up with the base cloth. I'm going to sew all the way to the end. That's the first seam done. I'm going to repeat that on all four corners now. So again, because I've not sewn to the end here on this, and I can open up the seam like that there, so I can open up the seam. I can line that corner up properly now. I don't have to snip it. So again, needle in the end of that stitch line. I've got to do a little back tack, leave the needle in and then go right to the very end, corner to corner, and a hole in the middle, sort of where I'm holding. Leave the needle in again, grab both corners again, corner of the base cloth, corner of the, the cover, the top. Sew to that point, needle in, and I should just be able to sew all the way to the end now. I'm going to repeat that on the other two now, and then that should be the cover done. And that's that cover done. So the cover's now been made. Got it on the bench with the base cloth facing upwards. I've also cut the foam and wadded it. So I now need to stuff it. So I'll show you how easy it is to stuff a cushion with a horseshoe zip. Rather than a zip where it's down, say the back end, if I just had a zip down this back end, I would have to try and get the cushion into that zip, which is quite tricky. So with a horseshoe zip, just flap this bit back, get the foam. I just lay the foam on top of the cover. So I'm going to grab this corner, squeeze it in my hand and push it into that corner. That corner is in. It's not in properly yet. Same with this corner, just squeeze it in my hand push it into the corner. 
go to the opposite corner here, push, push that in, so that's in there and there, and with the last corner, I'll put my arm underneath, bend, form in half, and then push it in. So I'm just going to ease it along here now to get the rest in. Grab both corners and just ease them into the corner and push them in. So that's in, it's not in perfectly yet, but it's in enough. So now all I need to do is adjust the corners. So just grabbing the corner and making sure the corner is right into the, into the corner here. Do the same with this one, put my hand in and just make sure the corner is lined up properly. And that's in nice. So I'll do the same with all four corners now, make sure the corners are in nice. As you can see I can get both hands in, I can manipulate the foam, make sure it's in the corner properly. Same with the last corner. Now I can also get my hand all the way down all the edges without trying to put my arm all the way through the cushion and try and get my arms in. I don't need to do that. So I just go along the edge, make sure the wadding hasn't bunched up anywhere. So I can feel the wadding all around, make sure it's all nice. There we go. Same with this side. So just check in my hand. You can feel sometimes where the wadding is bunched up. That feels nice. Feels nice along there. Feels nice along there. A little bit here, but I can get to that. Just turn it over. So now to zip it up, all I need to do, I'm going to put my hand in here, pull on the foam, and pull the base cloth as well and then start to zip up. So I'm just going to work along pulling the foam. I want to get the teeth of the zip as close as I can before I start to, to zip it up. Just puts less strain on the zip. I'm using my body as well to push against the foam. Working along And then push the slider in to the, so the sliders now out of the way. Flip it over, make it. I'm going to bend the cushion over the bench. Same with this side. Just bend it over the bench, just so the cushion isn't bowing upwards. Because if the cushion bows like that, you'll end up with these creases in it. So if you bend it the opposite way, it'll lie nicely. There we have it. One cushion. Done. So normally making a cushion like this, about this size, would take me about an hour to make. I would expect if you follow along with this tutorial, you could probably make a cushion in a couple of hours. Um, obviously excluding cutting the foam because you'll probably buy that anyway ready cut. But there we have it. So I hope you found this video useful, informative. So please subscribe and like for more content like this. I hope to see you again. Thank you for watching.